Okay, it's 11 o'clock um, on that frosty morning and we have made a whole load of mess along here. We have opened this up the whole way along. That's to allow us to get our ledger boards in place on a nice flat even surface or even-ish given how uneven the brick is. But it's better than the pebble dash. So that's good. The other thing we've done, you'll see there, we've obviously got the flitch plate here. We've pocketed out at the right level. Now the way that we figured this level out is using a string. So we attached, a, I don't know if you can see that there. But you know, so we attached a string here to the corner and got it right dead on the front of the corner. We then pulled that string really, really tight. We set the level up on that corner there. We set the spirit level up, got it perfectly level, pulled the string up to the bottom of the spirit level, marked it on here, and then measured around it and pocketed it out. So it's got a nice amount of space. And what I'm gonna do, so this flitch plate's gonna be sitting in there. If I've learned anything from this, it's that timber likes to breathe, and if it can't breathe, then it rots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in DPM in there and hopefully that will help give it a decent amount of protection. Um, so yeah, that's the plan anyway. Wrap that in DPM. So we're gonna get this flitch plate up now and then we can just double check the levels. If we need to pack anything out, then we can. That's easily done. Yeah, so we're getting there. I've just wrapped the end in DPM, this stuff. I literally just wrapped it all the way around and stapled it and then folded the ends. This is a double layer here, so it doesn't matter about the little crack there. But it's nice and pretty. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stand it up and then we're gonna slot it into that hole. Then we'll make it level. And just like that, it's done. And we did the same process. I didn't bother filming it because you've seen it before, but we walked it up and we put it on uh, like a framing system and we walked it up step by step. And that up there is dead level, which is ideal. Now we are sat on a full hole brick there. I've wrapped the end in DPM and I'm gonna cement all around it. On this side, it's because, because of the height of this end, to get this dead level, which is the most crucial, the most crucial element is this being dead level because this is what the whole of the rest of the house sits on at the front. I wanted to sit on a full brick. I did not want to be chopping bricks in sections or halves and then sitting that on there. But that obviously does mean that we are above the height of the plate here. So I'll have to pack this out. Well, I'll actually have to chop a little bit out of the head plate there and, um, and pack it out. I've got the building control guy coming later. I'm gonna to speak to him and just double check that he's happy with that. For now, what I've done is I've just temporarily rested it on some 11 mil. OSB, this stuff doesn't compress this way. It's already compressed under so much pressure when they manufacture it that that will not compress. Um, obviously, if I had, I, I measured and cut the timber to exactly the right height to accommodate this, because you can see that the height there is exactly the same as the distance from the distance there. The reason that it is all higher is because that brick there just happens to fall you know, say the, say the bed of mortar had been less below it, it would have been perfect. But I want to secure it on a solid brick there instead. So I'll speak to the building control who's coming later today or on Friday, and I'll see what he says. But for now, that is in. I just thought I would show very quickly what we're doing to get this level. We've propped this up so that it is level to itself. We've checked that with the spirit level. And then what we do is the bottom side of this needs to be the top of that there. And this is how we do it. We get the straightest piece of timber we can and we get a spirit level and we make sure that it is bang on, okay? The way we do that is we level it and flush it there, which Warren's doing. We get the level and we hold it. And we know now that the bottom of this is level with the top of that. Why? Because we're gonna have joist hangers that sit down here and the, joist, the bottom of the joist hanger is gonna be here and the joist is gonna sit and it's gonna run from here all the way across and it's gonna sit on that double timber plate over there. And we've done that, we've checked it at the front for level, going across this way, we've checked it in the middle and we're just about to check it at the back for level, just to make sure. It should be, 
because this is level, but we check it in two planes anyway, on two axes, just in case. And then we can secure it in with these bolts. I've already pre-drilled these, and then gonna drill it through with the masonry bit there. Drive them, drive the bolts in, 130 mil bolts, 150 mil bolts with some chem fix, straight into the wall. Right, we're gonna check one more time at the back there, and then we'll be done, we'll fix it in. Right, good morning, it is the next day, and these were set off yesterday late afternoon they went off all evening the chem fix and they are so solid i am really really happy with how firmly fixed in place they are we managed to get right in the middle of the brick at every point you can see the line there right in the in the middle of the brick and they were all solid i was really impressed now we're putting these joist hangers on this is basically exactly the same exactly the same as these here Except where this one falls, it's gonna conflict. The edge of this will conflict with that. So what I've done, is I've moved it over ever so slightly and I have bent the hanger and we're gonna nail it from the side that way. So it'll come and sit on the edge there and it'll have all the same fixings, just like that. And I'll almost certainly do the same on that side, just that I've got, or even actually what I might do is I might just bolt it into the end of the timber that way, have the, have the timber on, right on the edge. We'll see, we'll see, but this is a good method. If you're right on the edge of the ledger board, this is a great method. And it's perfectly structurally sound to be able to get it in. The difficulty will be nailing it in with that in the way. We'll find a way. All of the joist hangers are up now. Right, what we've just done is we've cut the DPM off here. This is the garage. DPM layer is, runs under there all the way and comes back up the other side. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it. We've just swept it off, it's had a clean. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sit this DPM underneath each of these and we're gonna wrap it up around the ends of them because this is the bit that's on the external wall. Obviously it's gonna be sheathed in OSB right up to the outside. And we're going to check though all those we're going to get all those get this level and get all those on at the right length but obviously these used to be trees and trees like sucking water up through their roots and so what we're going to do is we're going to protect the ends of them in dpm we're literally just going to wrap the ends around like that so we could get that in and get it on now morning all welcome to the first floor these are just temporary they're just put there so that we've got something safe to walk on. At the minute, I'm kind of walking across these joists, which isn't ideal, but they're so heavy, those 18 mil boards, they've got no flex in them whatsoever, but they also weigh an absolute ton, so getting them up here is a bit of a faff. So what we'll do is we'll sit on them, put those joist hangers in, nail, nail the timbers from either side of the hangers, and then just slide the board along and finish these ones. What we're doing now is we're gonna be measuring up this wall here. This one is gonna be a two-story wall that runs up all the way up the back of the house up to here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the edge of this plate, well actually I'm gonna measure from the inside for the actual wall, right the way up to the pebble dash. On this one, because it's partially internal, partially external, I'm gonna, it's almost like a bit of an experiment really, but I'm not gonna take the pebble dash off this one. And I'm gonna see what it's like. If I'm not happy with it, what I can do is I can take it, I can take the wall off and I can chip away the pebble dash and then I can put it back on, that's, that's fine. So I'm gonna pass this tape to Warren, he's gonna measure right up against the dash and then, we'll know the distance to the edge here of what we need to be building. Hey guys, right, so we have just had the building inspector come around and check all of the structure, check everything we've done, and he was very happy, which is always a relief. We are just about to start building, you can see I've put a double there, and I've put this here, here as well. We're just about to start getting those studs up here and a head plate to go across there. Ahead of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to finish bracing this flitch plate and these eight by threes across here. The reason I waited is because I wanted to get approval from the building inspector about my plan. As I mentioned, I don't know, in the last episode or earlier, depending on how these videos get made, this point here is sitting perfectly on a flat brick and I did not want to cut into the brick. Because of the height of that brick, it meant that this was slightly too low on this side. So what I've done is I've braced it there with an 11 mil piece of OSB. He was perfectly happy with that and he was also very happy for me to then make up the difference on the top 
using two laminations of OSB. So I'm going to use 18 mil and 11 mil. I've ripped them down. They're the same width as that flitch plate is. And I'm going to basically set them in place now so it supports that there and is the same height as this. And that way we've got a nice consistent height for the rest of the front of the wall. The reason that this is okay and is actually better than if I was to rip down a piece of timber is because the compression that this goes on under to make this structurally rigid and flat is so high that there is no more compression left in this unless say it got wet and then it started to delaminate you could then compress it again but these two pieces together here like this is going to be so strong and so rigid once it's secured in place and and set down that is not going to compress at all afterwards the Building inspector was perfectly happy with that plan. He's an ex-builder and he said that there was no there was no problem with that at all So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set that up in place now That's the finished article nicely supported Perfectly flush here at the front when we stick the level on it. It's dead level. In fact, I'll show you just in case the haters don't Dead level and it runs all the way across there as well Nicely, so that's perfectly flush. That's this little gap here is meaningless I can fill that in with something if I really needed to, but I don't, it's a tiny, tiny amount. That's fully supported under there all the way for the full width of that. So yeah, really happy. Right, we're up and we're about to start making these second story walls. And Warren's down there, he's got a cut list and he's working his way through that, which is nice. He's passing me these. These are the studs which are effectively going to stand upright on here. These are going to stand up on here like this and they're going to run up and there'll be a double header which meets around here and that leads me nicely to what it is that I'm doing now. Obviously I'm working at height so I'm being very very careful. This is not a tutorial or a how-to so don't bother copying me and then falling over and telling me that it's my fault because it's not. I've set up a level, my spirit level, I've worked up off the edge here and I've come up and I've figured out where is level in order for me to cut this. We need to have the double header plate sitting at around this point so that the pitch of the roof, which is going to key into this one here, so that that roof pitch can effectively be matched and followed through. This wall here is going to be sitting up and coming in here and then the roof is going to sit on. Now where we've got some slight issues is the fact that the pebble dash on here is not entirely square or plumb. So if you look down there, it is not parallax that is showing you that that there is wider than that down there. That is actual true and ours is dead plumb. That timber that we've put up is dead plumb and I refuse to build a wall that is out of plumb just because it matches with the building that's there. So puts us in a bit of a difficult position because obviously the brickwork the head plate is sitting on the brickwork, which is 35 mil in from here, you know, because there's a 35 mil skim of pebble dash, and then there's the brickwork, and then the brickwork has a head plate on it, which is where um, that is sitting. Now, the thing that works in my favor is that these tiles are not sitting on the brickwork, and I know that because I built it. These tiles are sitting on effectively a barge board that is attached in here so when i take or if i when when i take this fascia board off there is a timber under here and that is what these are sitting on so i can then move that timber on i can move i can work with that basically to try and get this to then flow perfectly on the other side for my roof because I want my roof to just continue from this one here I'll take all of these tiles off these little half tiles and I'll put full length tiles on so I'll, I want to build the roof in the same pitch as this up to a certain point and then it will come down inside there it's pretty tricky to explain and very dangerous to show so I'm not really going to be faffing around doing this much more but needless to say for now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting off some of this I'll be cutting off some of this um, basically broken manky old um, what the hell is this thing called gutter guttering and yeah I'll be doing cutting this out so I can find where the head plates gonna sit <laughs> 